first, I want you all to introduce yourselves, you know, give us a quick who you are, what you do kind of thing, especially as it relates to the drive market. Uh, one of you is, at least your company, is very well recognized in the industry, and the other two, a lot of people are probably scratching their heads. What's Enthusiast Network? What's Human Movement Management? So why don't you start, Norb, and tell us a little bit about okay. what you guys do. Cool. Uh, yeah, so the Enthusiast Network uh, owns, we own about 29 brands in the action adventure sports space, including brands like Powder, Snowboarder, uh, Transworld Snowboarding, uh, New Schoolers, um, Bike. So we have a lot of brands that are <clears throat> very closely aligned and associated with uh, the mountain markets. Uh, we also um, have a platform called Grind TV, which is <clears throat> a big uh, uh, action adventure sports platform that we do with uh, Yahoo. So our business is um, pretty vast, I would say, that as a as a media company, we've been on the fast track of getting in front of the uh, digital and social um, revolution, if you will. And you know, we'll talk more about some of the ways that we can tap into that. But uh, you know, our company alone, our group, my group alone, has over 25 million uh, followers on social. So, um, you know, that's our business. Great, Mike. So I'm the president of Killington Resort. Many of you may know that resort. It's uh, Based in Vermont, it's in central Vermont. We do about 800,000 skier visits in the winter, about uh, 150,000 visits in the summer. And um, you know, our market is pretty much all drive market. It's about 90% is probably drive market. The other 10% is, is international. Most of our market, uh, our biggest market is New York City, which isn't a surprise. The New York Metro is about 40% of our market. You know, New York and the surrounding areas, and Boston's about 25%, and then the rest of our market's kind of the, pretty much the whole rest of the East Coast. We're, uh, we're owned by Powder Corp, which is a family-owned uh, operator of ski resorts, also owns Human Movement, different than the powder that Norb owns. <laughs> yes. We're powder without an E. Correct. I've talked to John Cummings about that. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> uh, my name is Jeff Suvig. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Human Movement. Uh, it's based here in Colorado, and we are in the active entertainment industry. And if you don't know what the active entertainment industry is, I don't blame you, because we made up that term. Um, <laughs> you feel free to steal it. Uh, we, we produce events, um, is essentially the, uh, our forte and our skill set. Uh, cracking the code of uh, how millennials spend money has been our mission for the last decade. Um, we figured it out, and uh, in a lot of ways, we, we've developed a lot of the the events that uh, five years ago were absolutely mind blowing and, and leading the way um, for how mainly how millennials spend money. Um, uh, color runs, zombie runs, any stupid event you've ever heard of, um, our company's responsible for it. So I apologize, and I hope you had fun. <laughs> Um, and we, uh, we met John Cumming, uh, both of our, our owner at uh, Powder Corp out of Park City, and uh, also trying to crack the code of driving the summer markets, uh, how to animate uh, resorts like Killington and Copper, some of the other uh, family-owned businesses that John Cumming owns. And it was a unique challenge for us because we were uh, on a a slide of producing the biggest events in the country in Des Moines, Iowa, and Minneapolis, Minnesota, and all these markets um, that had no barrier to entry. We could create, an, uh, create a concept, and the next day someone could steal it. So we were on this mission to create proprietary events. Um, and so when we, met, when we met the Powder family, we uh, agreed to do an acquisition with them. And now it's my mission to drive summertime activities to our resorts around the country. OK. So. Um, <clears throat> Now you know why these guys are here. I think we have some good experts on stage. Let's start with you, Mike. There's about 12 million people in relatively easy driving distance to Killington. As you said, you have over 90% of your marketplace is the drive market. Uh, that includes New York, Boston, but even as far south as Philadelphia. I used to make that road trip to Killington many a time uh, for a two-day weekend. Um, but tell us about the urban markets, because the urban markets are pretty unique to the rest of the ski industry. And what are you doing to really get to those urban markets that are the bread and butter of your business? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things. In, the, in specifically in winter, uh, one of the main things we're doing is first and foremost, trying to grow the sport. So trying to get more people skiing and riding. Um, you know, we're doing that with a whole bunch of initiatives with National Ski Area Association. 
And then on top of that, we work with a lot of feeder resorts, some smaller, more regional resorts right around the cities, right outside of Boston, right outside of New York, New Jersey, those areas, trying to do partnerships to have those people coming up to the mountains, and, and that's really worked well. And then the other thing, uh, you know, as Dave mentioned, millennials driving less, trying to figure out how to, how to tap into that market, and specifically in the cities, we've had really good luck in the last couple of years working with some bus operators where uh, they'll drive around New York and pick people up and then bring them up for a day of skiing and then drive back at the end of the day. And uh, that market's really been growing for us. Could you give us an idea of the number of buses you're putting in on big uh, On weekends, this year, at, like out of New York, I think we were doing you know, six to 10 buses and a couple out of Boston. So years, a couple years ago, we didn't do too many at all. So That's each so day? On the weekends, typically. Yeah, it's a little a, harder, obviously. So weekend. every Saturday, Sunday, yep. you have six to 10 buses. And next year, when your snow is... Killer. Yeah, obviously this co this year on the East Coast was a really tough year, so um, yeah. it, it's been tough. But but we see that growing, and as you see the statistics with millennials, so you know we think that's going to really help us moving forward. Mm -hmm. So Norb, you run the one of the largest, if not the largest, active sports media yeah. companies in the country. Um, tell us about storytelling, and especially how you can really get to the kids uh, who think skating, you know, snowboarding, maybe who think that skating and being in the cement version of a snowboard park is plenty yeah. cool. Like, why go to the mountains? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things that we've embraced <clears throat> and uh, as, as challenging as the millennial is uh, and the Gen Z uh, behind them, um, it's, it's, they're also an incredibly connected group. And, you know, social media um, has really allowed all of us, whether it's resort operators or media companies, um, to you know, better target and reach these folks um, through fantastic storytelling and content delivery. Um, so you know, I think a lot of the opportunity that exists for all of us is uh, you know continuing to elevate you know that kind of experiential opportunity that uh, only can come with a weekend in the hills with your friends on some snowboards or skis or or whatever it might be, mountain bikes, um, and that you know that kind of unity and the fun that comes from that. Uh, is really where I think, uh, you know, the, the opportunity that we've seen in the last four or five years has really translated beyond, you know, long-form storytelling, which is still super important, and, and we certainly believe in that, um, you know, deeply. Um, but, you know, the, the idea of being able to use social to grow audience um, and through growing your audience and reaching more people down in Denver or New York or whatever it might be, and you're leaning on media companies like ours, or there's a ton of great media companies in the space, individual family-owned companies and big companies. Um, and we're all striving to do the same, the same thing that Mike said, is grow these sports. We, we have to grow these sports. We've got to um, take an active role in growing these sports. And um, so I think, you know, telling those stories, turning people on, um, making it easy for them to relate to that opportunity, and then putting a bunch of guys in the back of the car and heading up to the hills and spending the weekend. So Mike, have you guys done much with social, um, either working with Norb's company or other companies or on your own to really build it up to get the engagement that you need? Um, have you seen any results? Yeah, we've that? had great success. I think like everybody, I mean, it's, it's huge. You know, I mean, every time we're putting pictures up or we're doing a lot of short videos, a lot of funny videos, trying to different, do different things to kind of make you stand out. Hopefully people are sharing it, that type of thing. You know, I think as Dave said, you millennials are looking for different things, different experiences. Besides social, the other thing I'd say we're doing is trying to add on the experience side other than just the normal ski snowboard experience. So we've been adding to some of our food venues, more farm to table stuff, adding um, just unique things that you can't get anywhere else. We, we took an old lift terminal at the top of one of our uh, mountains and made a bar out of it. And now we take people up in a groomer for happy hour on the weekends, so you know, just a lot of different things that they can't get anywhere else, and they're really looking for those experiences. So Jeff, tell us a little bit more about your proprietary events. You're doing a lot of unique stuff, and you just kind of touched on it. So tell us, go a little deeper, as, and think about also, you know, you're being encouraged to focus more on summer, and that's a big part of it, but you also do winter events, and sure. how, how is winter and summer different, and, and just give us kind of a bigger picture. Sure. Um, yeah, proprietary events has been uh, uh, almost ad nauseum at our at our office now. But this was uh, in our our magnum opus that we we had we'd written about three years ago. After we created what we thought was some of the most amazingly uh, exciting ideas, uh, talking on what Nora was saying about um, how social has kind of democratized wealth 
um, you know, experience is the new luxury good, all of those uh, sayings are, are true, um, as it relates to not just millennials of, of any age. And, and so we, we, we uh, that was our catalyst for launching our, our, any event that we thought would change your social profile on, on Facebook, we wanted to be a part of that type of event. And so, um, and that was a really good concept and a good platform for a long time. And then once we realized there was very little barrier to entry, uh, you know, we were, we were driving a lot of traffic to cities as if they needed more traffic on the weekends. Uh, store owners loved us, uh, tax uh, receivers loved us, um, but we weren't able to, uh, to own that, that area. If we came up with a great concept in downtown Denver or in Seattle, uh, the next week someone else could knock us off. And so we went on this mission to find proprietary real estate and create proprietary events, which we've encouraged a lot, not just in our network of, of resorts, but um, resorts and property owners around the country when they're looking to drive new events or new traffic to their, to their businesses. Um, we say capitalize on what you have. Don't try to follow trends because trends are exactly that. They're just trends and they'll die quickly. Um, so for instance, right here we have the highest marina um, in the world, uh, the highest lake in the world um, that you can swim in. And so we, we've been working with, with Keystone in, the, in Summit County for a very long time, the town of Dillon, and we're creating the world's highest, ha world's highest triathlon. Um, and it's just a bucket list challenge. It'll try, it's just one weekend, and it'll create 10,000 new visitors on a weekend that's typically dead here in, in Summit County. And the town is, uh, you know, once we got past the Denver Water Board and made that happen, um, this is one of these proprietary events that no one else can do. You can't duplicate, and it'll live forever, and all the work put into the marketing behind it uh, will generate year after year. Let me ask you a question about yeah. that, because I heard about that one yesterday. And I was, first of all, you're not allowed to swim in Lake Dillon, so you had to deal with that, and love yeah. to hear what you, you did there. Um, and then, you know, that is a proprietary event that no one else can do, but who... Who does own it? Who owns that event? So start, tell us about the water part first, because you can't swim in that lake. Yeah, you can't, except. <laughs> except. Uh, yeah, ten, it was almost 10 years ago we, we applied for a permit for it, and we knew it was going to be a long haul. And it was just about 18 months ago that everyone came together and said, you know, this is the right group to do it with. The concept is great. We can make this, we can make this work. So Human Movement actually owns the event, and the beneficiaries are the community. And it's a bucket list event that is, uh, you know, it'll sell out in its first year, and it's exciting for the town. And it just is another thing for, for Summit County to another feather in its cap. And just last thing on that, it's in the fall, right? When, uh, when yeah. is it? It's the warmest the water will get, which I grew up on Lake Michigan, so it's like a hot tub. It'll be like 60, 65 degrees. So what are the dates? What are the like dates of the event? Degrees. It'll be September 10th. September 10th, yeah. you're going to fill Summit County. Which is typically which, a, a dead weekend. This is why, you know, this is part of the, the entire concept that uh, the Powder Corp had for us. We're doing it um, in conjunction with all the resorts around here, actually. But, and you know, we'll do the same type of proprietary events. Uh, Mike's team will, will, will reach out to us and say, essentially, you know, it's, it's much more sexy than this, but they'll say, these are the dead weekends, Jeff. You know, sprinkle your, your magic dust and see what happens. So talk about some magic dust he sprinkled for you. I don't actually have magic dust. You don't, okay. No. Next question. You just no, I was asking Mike. <laughs> no, but... Um, <laughs> Mike you know, has since, tons of magic dust. Go ahead, Mike. Since Human Movement came through, you know, for Killington specifically, we've been really focused on summer, like a lot of ski resorts have been doing. You heard the numbers. You know, it's a pretty small number that we do in summer visits compared to winter visits. So we see that, you know, the only area growing. So we've been very focused on summer, but specifically on vents, trying to just create momentum and critical mass every weekend has been the goal. So we've worked with Jeff. We uh, brought Dirty Girl last year, in, 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 in which brought about six, seven thousand people. That's a mud run, actually. Yeah, good. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dirty Girl Mud Run, sorry. So, uh, Dirty Girl Mud Run. And we've done, you know, so we've been adding events every weekend. We, he also brought an Oktoberfest, which brought another seven to 10,000 people in, in um, middle October. So those are the two events we worked on last summer, and now we're looking into doing some new ones. But, you know, it's, for us, it's the same thing. It's how do you take a weekend that critically in the summer might have 2,000 people, and how do you bring five to 10,000 people? For us, it's good for the resort. It's good for the community we're in. It's good for the businesses in the community. The businesses now can stay open longer in the summer, creates employment, all those things that come around that, that have been tough in a lot of the mountain towns where you only have business, say, six months a year. Mm -hmm. So you have the dirty girl mudder, but you do it in the fall instead of during mud season? 
Dirty Girl Mud Run. We do it in the summer. In the summer. That could be a and We actually do Spartan Race, which is a you know, similar event, not the Dirty Girls, just for, just for women. So it's Spartan. We do it in the fall. And so Dirty Girls. who are the real benefactors? Um, are you getting a lot of heads in beds on these kind of events? Are the resorts making any money on these events? Is it the DMO collecting tax dollars? Um, we've got a lot of uh, tour operators and OTAs in the room. Are there ways they can benefit? Like, talk to the whole audience about you know, who really can benefit from these types of things. Sure. Well, from my perspective, I mean, I think it's everybody over time. I think as we bring in, like we brought in Dirty Girl Mud Run this summer, had to say 6,000 people. A lot of those were uh, day visits. So the, the challenge, of course, is taking the day visits and getting them turned into an overnight. So that phase two that we're working on is how do we, get the, how do we animate the whole weekend and we take a great event, but then we don't want them to drive home and get them to stay over. So those are the things we've been doing. And, Things like Spartan, it's a whole weekend event, and you know that sells out all the condos within 50 miles of Killington. So you know we're trying to get to those type of events that help everybody, because basically for the resort, it's good for the whole community to succeed. We want the condo owners to do well. We want the business owners to do well. Then when they're open, people come on the off times and see there's something happening in the area, and it's just good for the vibe of the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. So follow up on that, but also, again, from the package side, whether it's a San Res at a resort. But, you know, if I'm going to come to a weekend that I know is going to fill up, I would be interested to buy a package. That could be kind of cool that, right. and, you know, because I'm not just coming myself and bringing my family or whatever. Right. So what have you seen there? Yeah, that, you know, we're working, I think Jesse True is out in the audience somewhere. We're working with his team at, at Copper right now for that exact thing. We have these great event concepts, and it is a drive market for a lot of these things. And unless it's this total bucket list that we're going to get people internationally to come to these events. Um, so if it's a, an event like a Dirty Girl Mud Run or a Spartan Race or something like that, you get a lot of the drive market to come up, but the, the goal is for everyone to benefit, we have to have some stickiness to it. And so we've now uh, added to our cliches and we're uh, calling them layered events. And uh, you know, that's, that's like pairing um, this women's weekend that we're doing at Copper. Yes, you can do an athletic event during the day. There's something for the family to do while uh, mom is out doing her event. And then at night, there's a, a wine pairing, and the next day, there's you know, some other kind of uh, festival that we're, that we're working with. Uh, you know, I, I think Killington, which is the most interesting resort that, that we've ever worked with, because they already have, uh, they're, they're brilliant in how they've built infrastructure for the summertime. I've taken my family there just to, uh, and we can spend an entire day and a lot of money just on their, their coaster rides and their mountain biking and their zip lines and the mazes, and it, and it has, uh, you know, there's a lot of stickiness, and so we don't necessarily have to come up with the, the world's greatest idea to host something there at his resort. Uh, we can, we just need to add another layer to it, another reason for someone to come up, and then they have, you know, a full Saturday booked with uh, infrastructure that's already there, and then they're sticking around for a Sunday event too. So that's, you know, layered events are a big, a big uh, initiative for us. And getting that resort animation going of lots of stuff to do, which people some resorts have. Yep, and then it forces people hopefully to spend the night and you know eat at the restaurants, and so everybody wins in this scenario. We're we're really so Norb with your storytelling hat on. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of stories being told here. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys done anything to cover live? You know some of these events and festivals, and yeah. and you know then push that out through social. And what's that look like? Yeah, for sure. So uh, actually, this year we are partnering with uh, GoPro in Vail Valley Foundation to, uh, on the GoPro Mountain Games. Uh, so Grind TV and um, a number of my vertical brands, uh, Canoe and Kayak, Stand Up Paddle, uh, Bike, uh, will all be there. Um, and we'll be you know, working with them uh, not only in kind of prepackaging content leading up to the event, but then also on site and during the event, you know, amplifying uh, what's going on on the hill. Um, and then we do a lot of our own events. We do about 89 events of our own. Um, largely at these guys' resorts. Um, so, uh, you know, and those events, you know, tend, like for instance, Snowboarder does an event called Super Park. Uh, we do it at Mammoth this year, and it's a massive uh, invite-only snowboarding event. Um, and it's, you know, brings the cream of the cream and snowboarding to the mountain. It's a great cachet opportunity for the mountain. And then, of course, we're amplifying that through media. And, you know, as a media company, we're not the only ones doing that. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of other brands to do that, but I think that's where the, the relationship with resort operators and the media <clears throat> is really important to go beyond just buying spots and dots. It's sitting down and getting creative and strategic about you know what are some of the ideas that we can do together 
um, that are going to benefit both parties. You know, we've got um, a large audience of, of consumers who are actually spending money for subscriptions. Um, you know, unlike a lot of digital platforms that are all free, all aggregated, um, that's a very valuable consumer. And just like the consumer at ski or skiing or free skier or you know mountain bike action or whatever, there's a lot of different brands that have those types of consumers. So leverage them, take advantage of them. Um, and then of course through, you know, kind of a, a dual amplification media plus the resort platforms, you really can hit it out of the park. Uh, so just real quick back to your comment and partnering with GoPro, are you putting GoPro on athletes as they compete and having live coverage? Well, we're from just, the we're actually party? just uh, one of the media partners outside MAG is also one of the media partners. Um, GoPro themselves, they integrate the GoPro product into the competition throughout. So whether it's dogs jumping in, you know, jumping in the water or, uh, you know, um, they have a really cool uh, stand-up paddle race down the river uh, and they've got GoPros strapped all over that. So um, obviously for GoPro, it's, you know, it's a great way to show how their product integrates on a lot of different types of sports. Um, for us, it's really more, you know, we just... Um, They've been a good partner of ours for many, many years, um, and uh, and we really like, um, you know, outdoors with Grind TV. Grind TV is about 60% outdoors, about 40% action sports. So um, we really have been focusing a lot of our energy on getting into the outdoor communities, Great. mountain biking, skiing, things like that. Let's talk back to your data a little bit, Dave. Um, I, I was really, as the first time you showed me the slide of the big circles, and. There's not that many big circles, and then there's a lot of a medium bit. circles, and then there's a real lot of smaller circles, but there's a lot of circles. Um, give us a little bit more info about what it really means, uh, especially when you overlaid it with the flight data that you showed. Yeah, I mean, I think there's <clears throat> just, a, you know, like you said, a, a long tail of where skiers and snowboarders live, and uh, there's, there's a lot of different, you know, there's, there's 37 different states that have a ski area in them in the United States. And so there's a, there's a widely distributed uh, population base that is our, our customers in the wintertime. Um, but I think one of the important things is to realize that those same cities probably have a lot of non-skiers who are a much bigger opportunity uh, to be your market in the summertime. So whether you're just a small uh, a hill that might be hosting a couple of events uh, with, with, in the summertime with your local market, or if you're a large des destination in the West that's drawing people coming on road trips, um, you know, you, there's, a, there's a big opportunity to continue to draw more people in those same circles. Those circles just represented people who are skiers and snowboarders. There's a lot more people in those same markets who are not skiers and snowboarders who are candidates to come visit our resorts uh, in all seasons. That's a, okay. I'd add to that real quick, too, and I think Julian may have given me the stat a couple months ago about how many, uh, Salt Lake being, uh, you know, known as a, a great destination ski resort with a, with a city right there, it's mm -hmm. only... I don't know what the percentage of skiers actually it is. Was it 4%? It's that probably 5%. 5% like of yeah. the entire population, the population of Salt Lake that are actually skiers. Right. And you know, uh, our company owns Snowbird there, and, and that was one of our challenges. They said, how do we get the non-skiers up in the summertime? And it, it wasn't intentionally. We created a, a proprietary event on Snowbird last summer, and our post-surveys came back, and it was almost 98% of non-skiers never been on a gondola before, never has been to Snowbird before, and I mean, that, that was a metric that blew my mind. I thought we were actually going to attract more of those skiers. So that's yeah, I mean, the, exactly the, your The point. most popular activity at ski areas in the summertime is, is scenic chairlift rides because a lot of those people have never been on a chairlift before. And that is like an amusement park ride to them. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, they ride that and then eat lunch at the Killington, at the Peak Lodge. Uh, yeah, but I was going to say at Killington. So we, we um, took down our, we have a building at the top of our gondola and we took that down and built a really nice new building. And, uh, so that's kind of started a couple of years ago, get us getting back into summer. And uh, as you just said, it's, it's sort of amazing. Literally, people ride the gondola like it's an actual amusement ride, where people in the winter are skiing and they're just used to it. It's just another lift. But we get people up here that, you know, they're just looking, they're just amazed to be in the mountains. So that was really the other things we've been doing with summer is really just trying to um, as Jeff said, get people to be more sticky, want to come up and do other things. So uh, we, we added a mountain coaster. We've really expanded mountain biking. We've doubled our mountain biking for the last three years in a row. So, you know, all those things. And we're not, there's some crossover to skiing, but uh, there's not that much. And for us, it's, you know, you tie having some critical assets like, like 
mountain biking, and then the coaster, and zip lines, and ropes courses, and then you tie that with events, and then now you start really getting something that when families come up or friends come up, there's something that almost everybody can do. Mm -hmm. If you're a little bit afraid of maybe mountain downhill mountain biking, you have other things to try. So that's really starting to work, helping us with critical mass. Mm -hmm. So I had a question, especially, you know, we could talk about Powder Corp, uh, which owns Killington and a cousin of Snowbird Copper. Um, you just said in Salt Lake, amazing to me, 5% of people in Utah actually ski, but they're coming up to Snowbird. Uh, probably similar in Killington, you got a lot of non-skiers coming up. Just for the day, taking a lift ride, would you give them a free lift ride again called a ski lift ticket, free lesson, free rental if they want to return to ski to convert them from these 95% to maybe grab another 5% in Utah? And they might need more than one day to convince them to become a skier because we all know it takes more than a day to really learn. I can, Let's, yeah. I can take that. Um, yeah, I mean, actually what we started doing last year with some of our events, uh, Dirty Girl, Spartan, where we know we're getting a lot of people that aren't skiers and riders, we've been giving offers to come back for free, learn to ski, learn to ride in the winter. So trying to cross promote both seasons and then obviously in the winter, trying to promote people to come back and tell them about all the fun things we have in the summer. So we've been doing that with pretty good success. Do you have a conversion rate yet or it's uh, early? I'm not sure I know the conversion on that, but you know, it, it definitely is starting to pick up some legs. So as we start filling out all our summer events, uh, that's really gonna start to help out. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that Jeff at Snowbird or Copper other places? Yeah, I, I don't know what the conversion rate is because it's relatively new for us. We're about 14 months into it. Um, but that is absolutely the, well, the metrics are mind-blowing to me because we actually thought the opposite was going to happen is that with the, the powerful marking of a, uh, of a copper mountain that we could use some of our old tricks and, and bring up some of their customers as well. Um, and it's the opposite. We're bringing in, we're creating new customers, which is the point, you know, and it's, and it's fantastic. So, and then we, uh, running these group packages and, um, multi-day stays and then giving them ski tickets for the, you know, for the following year, that is, uh, I mean, that's the ultimate stickiness. If we can convert one weekend into a lifetime customer, um, and that's uh, you know, another one of our things is, is how do we become part of their life cycle from a young age and, and keep them for their entire life? <coughs> and, that's, and this is one of the few markets that you can actually do that in. Um, you, know, you hear this in Major League Baseball, they're suffering with the same kind of problem and they're doing the same kind of thing, trying to reach uh, the kids younger, change the type of work that they're doing, uh, uh, type of event that they're going to, um, and keeping them for their entire uh, lifetime. You know. Yeah, I think there's a lot of there there with all the resorts starting to put their resources and assets towards summer and then turn those people. Um, talking about kids, tell us about Woodward. Uh, uh, I think a lot of people in the audience probably don't know what Woodward is. I'm not talking about your ski and snowboard program. Um, and I know that there's not a Woodward yet at Killington, um, but there sure is a big one here at Copper. There's a big one in Pennsylvania. So can you guys tell us that's another powder corp asset? But I, th I think Woodward's brilliant. My kid did it and just wants to live there, except when he was 10. Uh, the instructors didn't, they were looking the other way and he had a Red Bull and that was pretty cool for him. And we, we wanted to make sure he got a little more supervision than that, uh, but they just go wild there, literally. So tell us about that. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, Woodward's one of the, the most amazing complimentary businesses to a, a ski resort uh, industry. And I know that there's a lot of talks of different competitive uh, brands getting built or, uh, with the same kind of concept, but I, I think I first appreciated the, the concept is that when I was uh, doing my first site visit to Boreal, and they have they have one too, a smaller version of what we have here in Copper, and it was an amazing uh, to see because I grew up skiing in, in Metro Detroit, one of the best ski hills in the world, Mount Brighton, and um, you would <laughs> your parents would. A lot of great skiers come out of there, a lot of ice, a lot of edges. Um, and you would, you would get dropped off in the morning and you were babysat only until about 4 p.m. Um, and then there was, of course there was night skiing if you could bear that temperature. And uh, you know, whereas in Boreal you would leave, uh, you'd be done with skiing for the afternoon and you would go right in to Woodward and keep doing it. You had the energy of a 12 year old and you're, and you're jumping and you're working with people, you're working on your skills. And it's a full day of entertainment for a kid, healthy entertainment too by the way that is just an incredible, uh, you know, getting them to become your lifetime customer is um, it's a, it's a brilliant play and, and it is a lot of fun and we do give 10 year olds Red Bulls. I'm just kidding, no, I'm not <laughs> <twisting>. <laughs> that's the number one complaint I think. 
but it is, it's one of the most amazing brands, and, and uh, Gary, you know, Gary Ream, the founder of it, created it in Pennsylvania, in Woodward, Pennsylvania, and I mean, he's obviously been, uh, I mean, he's, he's famous amongst all of the action sports athletes. Norb knows this mm -hmm. world much better than I do. Yeah. Um, and you could probably talk on it better than I can about how, what an amazing brand it is, and also what kind of stickiness it creates for resorts, too. Yeah, I think the thing that, that we've been most impressed by is it's become so much broader, or more broad, I should say, um, than just you know a tricks and kicks weekend. Um, you know now they've got a full media uh, you know capacity, so kids can come in, learn how to shoot on cameras and shoot their friends. And if they want to become filmers, um, you know rather than just writers, you know there's a there's an opportunity for them now. They've actually expanded into cheerleading, believe it or not, and added that component to it. So you're getting a completely different audience and different kind of group that's coming up there. So. You know, for kids, it, I think it's it's brilliant. I mean, they've they've done a brilliant job and um, uh, created that ultimate you know uh, camp that uh, most any kid that is involved or likes these sports, skateboarding, snowboarding, whatever, um, has a has a, a, a new home to kind of. Call it's it. year round. Um, yep. There are summer camps, and then I know when we took our kid to the summer camp, the counselors were probably ski instructors and lifties mm -hmm. who now have a year-round job, which is what we were talking about yesterday about how to create year-round jobs. So I just, I think the model makes a lot of sense. Um, still sticking with kids, the surf, skate, snow generation that yep. we've talked about. Yep. Um, give us some insight into that and some things that you're seeing, you know, because your, your uh, media titles are all pointing to that in quite yep. a big way. Well, I think there's a couple misperceptions um, that, you know, when I spent some time talking to some of my guys before we came up here, um, you know, a lot of people think the, the uh, Gen Zers and the um, uh, Gen Xers aren't participating as much on Facebook as they, as they should be. It's a, that's, that's a falsehood. You know, they, they may not share as much, but they absolutely are using Facebook, um, and we find it to be an extraordinarily effective uh, platform. Obviously, Snapchat uh, is a platform that has become more and more, um, you know, kind of used by the, the younger consumer. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, still Instagram um, has, uh, especially with the video integration that Instagram's brought in, has, you know, has massive stickiness. Uh, photos are still more effective than videos, although videos have a longer kind of, uh, obviously, because they, they run in a, you know, 30 second or so run. Um, but, you know, we're talking about the surf, skate, snow generation is a, you know, short attention span theater, right? I mean, you've got to get in and get them excited and kind of turn them on with content real quickly um, and then hook them. And, you know, what, what we talk about all the time is that audience uh, development, that audience creation partnership. Um, because at the end of the day, if we can, you know, if you guys can leverage a, a media partner to add another 8,000, 10,000, 15,000, 40,000 uh, likes to your Instagram account, um, you know, those are 15, 8, 10,000 people that you can now market year round. Um, they've, you know, come in and, and, and opted in, if you will, because of the, the way that the social platforms are targeted. Um, and, you know, they're, they're a, a finicky bunch. You know, you've got to be pretty strategic on how you uh, market to them and, and, and the type of content you put forward. But um, we're seeing a, a lot of resorts are extremely, um, you know, aggressive in this area. We love working with them on that. So we've talked about events and festivals. We had a little mention of zip lines and mountain biking. But let's start with the overall summer side. Um, and we're going to have a whole workshop about the summer. These guys are all going to uh, jump back in more detail just about summer after uh, the keynote. But let's just talk about overall. What, what have you seen that really makes the biggest difference in creating that animation at a resort so that when you get to a Killington or a Copper or a Keystone, it feels like a it's something's happening in the middle of uh, what's not their full season. Mm -hmm. I, I, sure, I'll start. Uh, you know, one of the things that we found that were most interesting, especially for a lot of the resort operators and, and the resort marketers uh, and, the, and the sales team for that matter, is that we're, we're working with a lot of the brands that are already partners of the ski resorts that don't want to become just part of, we call it dog's breakfast of a, on, a, on the back of a t-shirt. Um, you know, just a, a logo out there. They want to create their own events, and they have uh, money and time, and they and it gets more value for them at their with their uh, relationship with the ski resort. So, if you have a Pepsi or a Coke, and you're creating just a, a, a summertime uh, sticky event with with one of your brands, is a is one of the, the the fastest ways. And what I think.
think is the most interesting way to create more value for both the ski resort um, or any any resort for that matter, and then and then also your partner as well. So that's you know that's kind of one of the new trends that we're seeing a lot that are happening too. And then of course, um, you know, there's there's the the tried and true events that we that we've seen that are just um, smaller layered events and then big swings like a, a GoPro games or something like that. Is uh, you know it's a very expensive proposition and uh, it takes time to build, but they're 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 worth it once they become part of the establishment. Um, which I think is actually a bad word, um, but uh, <laughs> but once you become uh, an established event, um, then you, all these years of uh, marketing has paid off, and, and now it's a, a destination weekend that people know to go up to Vail now mm -hmm. to go be a part of. So it takes some time, and you you've made some big investments that you're waiting to pay. Yeah, off. I mean the other thing we've seen. So if we take Killington from 10 years ago, we basically had golf. We have a hotel and conference center, so we do weddings and a bunch of those things. We had mountain biking, but mountain biking typically was off the top of the mountain. It was really aggressive single track. You know, for the average person trying to learn was really complicated. You're worried you're gonna die. So, you know, so we, we uh, now we've moved to a, a lower tier. There's a whole new kind of style of mountain biking, flow trails, something that, you know, little kids to parents to families can do. And it's actually so nice that, you know, even the best riders, so what we've seen at Killington, which is really nice, is the best riders who are at the top doing all the single track, now that we've invested, you know, on the lower part of the mountain, on a lot of these flow type trails, they're built in a way where the best riders can ride them and the beginners can ride them all kind of, they can ride them different ways, kind of like you can ride a ski trail. So what we found is, you know, in the past, we were, it was almost like trying to teach a person to ski or snowboard on a double black diamond, you'd never do that. But in mountain biking, that's sort of what we did. We put them at the top of the mountain and not too many of them came back, which you know isn't great for the business. So, Literally. you know, so so for us, it's all about so so mountain biking is one piece, and then we've been adding, as I said, some of these other pieces. Everyone knows, you know, golf market's not really a great business. And the other thing, you know, we've seen at Killington is a lot of our, you know, we have a pretty aggressive mountain for skiing, and a lot of the people that come there want that type of aggressive stuff. So we've been adding, you know, there's just all those different pieces add to a fun-filled week weekend and then as we start adding events it's just making it a place where people go I can go up there for a weekend and have an awesome time but it's also a beautiful place if you want to go relax as well. So we have time for one more question back to our lightning round format. Um, we'll start with you Dave and okay. go across you get one minute and we want to do a takeaway here for the audience okay. what's your one best idea <laughs> to reach the millennial or and or Gen Z Generation. Yeah, I think you've really got to know your market, know the you know that map, where your customers live, and you got to go to, go there and find out what are they doing, what are they what are they about, what are they, what restaurants are they eating at, what clubs are they going to, what uh, sporting events are they going to, and figure out how your mountain destination can fit into that mix and what is going to attract appeal to that group of people. Understand your competition. Go out there and see what they're actually doing. And your competition isn't, in the summertime in particular, but increasingly in the winter, your competition isn't just other ski areas, as we all know, but we have to remind ourselves, it's, it's a lot of other things that people are doing. One thing with millennials is they like to experience lots of different things. And that's an opportunity, but a challenge too. Great, Norm? So yeah, so I actually uh, solicited some info in, input from my staff, and many of you guys may know a guy named Pat Bridges, who's our creative director at Snowboarder. And one thing that he told me, and I think it's, it's spot on, is that if the millennials are a tricky bunch, as, as Mike had mentioned before, they don't like to drive as much as uh, you know, our generation. Um, so Pat's idea was to target the drivers. And if you could target drivers and almost treat them like designated drivers, where if, as the driver, if you drive a car load of guys up and girls up to the hill, you ski for free. Um, and if you, you know, register yourself as a driver, um, maybe you get a season's pass because, you know, you're the guy who's, you know, shuttling all these kids up the hill. So um, I asked him about, you know, the, the patterns that he, that, that he sees and that they've seen, and he says that he thinks that that would be, you know, a, a good strategic idea for, for mountains. So just something to think about both summer and winter. Yeah, but I guess the thing I think of a lot, I mean, you hear so much about all the differences of millennials, but the one thing that to me keeps coming back is they're not that dissimilar to everyone else in ultimately they want a great experience. So when people are coming to the resort, really, you know, I, I think we, we have to kind of balance what we do specifically for millennials 
and just making sure we have an amazing experience. So, you know, we spend a lot of time surveying and trying to talk to all our guests and trying to make sure we just have, you know, we keep doing things that make the experience better because generally everybody wants the same thing. If they're spending money, they want to get good value, they want to have a great experience. And, you know, so to me, I think there's sort of a balance there to not get too crazy of trying to target that. But at the end of the day, I think if you provide a great experience for millennials, it's probably a great experience for their parents and everyone else. Finish it up. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the Oprah reveal moment. Mm -hmm. I actually am a millennial. Oh. So, <laughs> oh. so I know. <laughs> so tell us like it is. How we think. <laughs> um, just kidding. But I am actually a millennial. Um, you know, my whole career has been based on creating something out of nothing, you know, with, with not having money to create had to, for infrastructure, uh, creating experiences, and, that, and I don't know who actually came up with the quote, but, the, but this is 100% the, uh, the target. Any, any kind of information you can scrape out of millennials, it comes back to this still, as it experiences the new luxury good. And we don't focus on anything else except for creating amazing experiences that you cannot get anywhere else. And everybody in this room has something that somebody else doesn't have, and we focus on that. And it, once you can extract whatever that is from your own destination, uh, you're going you're gonna to attract that buyer. And by the way, you'll also attract the older population, too. So. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Bielan, Norb Garrett, Mike Solomano, and Jeff Suffolk. Thank you. Thank you.